teaching on blessings and miracles. Last week, you remember that we were talking about the spoken word. The time before, we were talking about the power of confession. Then we talked about the power of the spoken word, speaking the word of God and seeing the victory in all the areas of your life. You know, as we've been doing these teachings on how to appropriate the finished work of the cross in every area of your life, it's been very exciting. We've shared a lot of our own personal stories, as you know, um, and to show you that we also go through things and we want to, to teach you how to get to the other side when, when the enemy tries to throw you a curve and the Lord will straighten out your path. So today we're going to be teaching on blessings and miracles. Blessings and miracles. And, you know, what we need to understand is both blessings and miracles are two different ways to, that God meets our needs. That God meets our needs. And both are very, very important. But we're going to show you the difference in the two. And I want to start by giving you the definition uh, of a miracle. And this is uh, in the dictionary. It says, a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Isn't that something? And it puts in here the example of the miracle of rising from the grave. I thought that was pretty amazing. A supernatural phenomenon, a mystery, prodigy, sign, and another one they put down an example of his first miracle was to turn the water into wine. This is a definition in the dictionary. I thought that was really cool. A highly improbable or extraordinary event, development, or accomplishment that brings very welcome consequences. One thing about a miracle is a miracle is always temporary. It's not lasting. I call it a stopgap measure. Whatever's going on in your life, whether it's health-related, whether it's finance-related, whether it's whatever it is, and you need something, you know, how many times do we say, God, we need a miracle? But of course, miracles and, and blessings are two different things, but miracles are a stopgap measure. They are meant to stand in the gap. They're meant to, you know, somebody, somebody that's dying, are they given a, 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 um, a diagnosis of, you know, you've got, you know, a week to live, and they don't need, they really, it's, it's not about, you don't need to sit there and teach them about blessings. You need to teach them, yeah, you need a miracle right now. But the miracle would be a stopgap measure. And as you learn about blessings and learn how to appropriate the blessings, but the miracle would be what, what it would call for. Um, let's see here. Let's look over at uh, verse 16, chapter 16, verse 31 in, in um, let's see, where is it, Exodus? Is that Exodus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Exodus 16, verse 31. And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coliander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Fill an omer with it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a pot and put an omer of manna in it and lay it before the Lord to be kept for generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel ate manna for 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. So yes, this was a long miracle, 40 years, but once it said, once it said they, they ate man until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. So it was, it was temporary. It was a temporary thing. It was not meant to be uh, ongoing. It was something to feed the children of Israel in the wilderness to give them nutrition. I mean, you know that thing had to be pretty nutritious <laughs> to be able to give them everything that their bodies would need in like a, a wafer or omer type thing. That's, a, that's amazing. And God provided that. And you know what? You can imagine what happened 
on in, as they go into year 41 and they wake up one day and they go out there and you know there's they're used to going through a whole generation of this happening with children and everything else and all of a sudden you know you there's nothing there and it's like oh my gosh you know it's like probably a panic set into a lot of people because they were used to that miracle they were used to being fed by that. It's not that all of them are crazy about eating it or not tired of it. Some of them were, and they, they expressed that. But it was time for them. To, it was time for them to move on to the next step with God. And God, you know, God wants to teach us how to walk in the blessings and not depend on miracles. Amen. Amen. Miracles are good. Miracles are of God, but they're not intended to be long term. They are a stopgap measure in our lives. All right, also another example, if we look over in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 17, uh, around verse 5, and this is about Elijah. And so verse 5 says, So he went and did according to the word of God, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Okay, next. The ravens brought him bread and meat, in the morning. I want you to look at this. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. Isn't that something? I mean, it's like on a time schedule. It's not like they showed up at, you know, 2 a.m. And, and one day and 9 a.m. the next day and it's all sporadic. I mean, they brought it to him at a time of need, a time of, of substance, and brought it to, brought it to Elijah at, 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 in, in, the, it's in the morning time brought him in the evening time. So he basically had breakfast and he had supper. Now, he didn't have any lunch, but I'm sure he was well fed. And so he had that, but the ravens were commanded. God commanded the ravens to bring this meat to him and bread to him in the morning time and in the evening time. And then his substance came from the brook. So let's continue down. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So what happens when the brook dries up? What happens when the ravens don't show up anymore? You just trust God. But Elijah needed food. He needed water. He needed substance to keep him going. And unbeknownst to Elijah, he didn't know how this was going to happen, but God ordered the brook to do this. He ordered the, or he put, put the brook there for, uh, took Elijah to the brook, and yet he, t and he brought the, had the ravens, which is just amazing to me, that the ravens would show up and bring not only meat, because I can kind of wrap my mind around a little meat action that, you know, they're bringing some meat in their, in their mouth, but the ravens bringing bread too? I mean, mustard and mayonnaise in between, and, and, you know, that kind of thing, and some Fritos or something, you know? But it's just like, it's amazing. But God, know, God knows what we need at the time we need it, amen? Even the word says that even when we pray, so that the Lord already knows what you need even before you pray. And yes, we need to go ahead and pray. But in both these cases, both of these examples, God was providing. He is the Lord God who sees ahead and makes provision for us. And he not only makes provision, he, and he not only is provide, provide, provider for us, he is our provision. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, as you know, then, then he went on to the rest of the story. We're not going to go to that part of the story, but how he went to the widow woman and and she said, well, me and my son, were going to die. We had this last meal. And, and she ended up, and he said, give me this, and then God will multiply this for you. From then on, as you know the story, we won't go there today. It just so happens that all of our examples have to deal with food. But anyway, you know, I will say this, though. What? You know, it was really neat that the children of Israel, um, you know, not only were they getting the manna, but they also had water coming out of rocks. Yes. So, you know, these are really specific, miraculous things. It just so happens the ones we chose. In fact, even the New Testament one we chose has to do with food. So in Matthew 14, 17 through 21, let's read that. And Jesus said to him, 
we have here only five loaves and two fish. Or he, they said to Jesus, we only have five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fish, not even enough for Van or Javan. I mean, our Regina. Watch it. Now, now you know, you didn't have to go there. <laughs> anyway, hey, you know what? When he and I met, when he and I met, I weighed like 90 pounds, and I ate like a bird. And then he started taking me to all these fancy restaurants, you know? And he would, and he, I mean, really, Putting really it on nice the credit restaurants. card, making $870 yeah. a month at Delta Airlines. And by that. the time we got through the appetizer, I was already full. Yeah. And finally he looked at me and said, eating is not a spectator sport. If I'm going to take you to all these fancy restaurants, you're going to eat. Well, 20 pounds later, I was... <laughs> I, 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 he taught me how to eat well, and now I, I wish he hadn't. But anyway, so it goes on to say, and he said, bring this to me. And then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he blessed it and broke it. And he gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So he created the miracle and they pursued it and finished it out. So when it goes on to say, so they ate and they were all filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now, how do you get 12 baskets of remaining? And they had fed. Now, those who had eaten were 5,000 men, beside women and children. So you're looking at probably 15,000 people. And yet they come up with five, with, uh, and they ate, and they were full, and they took up 12 baskets full from five loaves and two fish. Now, y'all, that, that is a miracle. That's what you call yeah. a miracle. That is a calling card of Jesus. I mean, yeah. he did these miracles. Van's going to talk more about that in just a second. But before he does, I wanted to share a personal example with you. When Solid Rock first began, we were downtown. We were in inner city missions work. And we, would, um, we, would, we had buses that were given to the church. It was amazing how God orchestrated miraculous things. I mean, we believed God for a bus and just ask the Lord. We didn't say a word to anybody else. We were believing for miraculously to be given a bus. And out of the clear blue, we went to a function. 20 minutes after we prayed that prayer, and a man walked up to us, and he didn't say, hi, how are you, or anything. He said, you wouldn't need a bus, would you? I mean, just like that, y'all. I'm telling you, the Lord provides. When you have an immediate need, and you're believing for a miracle, God makes a way. Well, the story I wanted to share with you was about food, and this was so amazing. So this would have been November of 98. We, 98, we started in March of 98, and this was in November of So this was Thanksgiving of 98, and we were, we were going to go to all the shelters, and we are going to bring in the families, and we were going to serve a nice candlelight dinner on linen tablecloths and make it really special for all these families. And as we were busing them in, we had no idea. We were preparing for 200. We had over 500 people that day. So we did not think in the natural that we had enough food. But let me tell you what happened. The lady who was over our, our uh, food ministry, she came out there, and we had these big vats, these big containers with the little uh, heating elements underneath. Y'all have seen them before. And so I'm just going to give one example. But we had a table full of food from the end of the stage over here to the end of the stage over there. And we had this thing. I'm just going to tell you about the mashed potatoes. So we had this thing of mashed potatoes, and these people came through, and they kept serving their plates with mashed potatoes. This is just one example. There was all kinds of stuff, fried chicken, and all, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So they kept serving themselves, and people even came back for seconds. The, the lady that was heading up, Mary Catherine, came out, and she, she looked at that, and she was bringing out more potatoes. She said, why are y'all not serving the mashed potatoes? We said, we're serving the mashed potatoes. Look at all the plates. Look at the people's plates. She said, that hasn't gone down any. Y'all, the food was literally being multiplied before our eyes. We were watching the miraculousness of God and his love for the families that were in the streets. And he was providing this food supernaturally. You know, I know y'all have been hearing about the, the miraculous thing about, some of you may not have heard, but in North Georgia, the, the, the oil that's coming out of the Bible. How many of you have heard the story? That's about the oil that's coming Dalton, out of the Bible? Yeah. Oh, in Dalton. Yep, in Dalton, uh, Dalton, Georgia. Oil, this, this pastor was believing for miraculous things. 
this is an amazing miracle. And his bottle just started pouring out oil. And, and so they've got it in a big box, and it keeps pouring out oil. And they've given out over, well, this has been a while, so it's probably more than that now, over 200 gallons of oil. And it just keeps on pouring out. And the Lord told him, as long as you keep giving it away for people to pray for the sick and anoint them with oil. The Bible says, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. They were believing for oil. Well, they got oil. They got oil. This oil is unscented. It doesn't have a color. But it's definitely oil. And they put it in these little bitty vials. And they've given out over 200,000? I don't know how many. I don't know how many of these little vials. I forgot how many. I don't know. But it keeps on happening. Well, that's exactly what was happening with this food. And we were watching, and it literally was not going down. Let me tell you, not only did we give everybody seconds and leftovers to take home, but there was another church coming in after us, and they had a function, and we gave them the rest of the food. They had food left over, so they went and they gave it to another ministry, and they had food left over. This was the food that never ended. And we, I mean, I am serious. Y'all, that is a miracle. Yeah. This is what we're talking about, miracles. Miracles are very, very important as well as blessings. And we want you to understand the value and the difference of them both. If we don't finish it today, we'll, we'll carry on next week. But I, I wanted to use that example because we watched it with our own eyes as this, I mean, you know how you serve people and the, the food starts going down lower and lower and lower and you're scraping the bottom of the pan. We never got to the bottom. And we served over 500 people. Now, it wasn't 5,000 and it wasn't 15,000, but that food carried on. And I'm telling you, we watched God do these miraculous things just like he gave us the bus. Just within 20 minutes, we were given a bus. Y'all, this is awesome stuff. Miracles. Amen. Amen. But if you need a miracle, you know, we, we're telling you these things because we've lived it, but it doesn't mean it's just special for us at mm -hmm. all. It's for all of us. Amen. If you're a believer, then it, you qualify. If you believe in Jesus and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you certainly qualify. Miracles are not as abundant as blessings. Miracles are not as abundant as blessings. And as I said earlier, uh, and Regina said, Miracle are, miracles are not God's best. They're, they're stopgap measures, and they're there to, to, to you know, because the just shall live by faith. What does that mean? That means it's a lifestyle. And the, the abundance and the, the provision and the blessings, you know, chase us down. They follow us, and, and they go. But when, if, a, if a miracle is needed, a miracle is needed. And God's not going to withhold a miracle. And it's by as the Spirit wills. We know that. It's not just by us believing, but it's as, as the Spirit wills. And, you know, we can certainly believe for a miracle if we need a miracle, if it's a miracle situation, which leads me to the next point, which is, you know, that miracles, to have a miracle, you must have a crisis. That's bottom line. You've got to have a personal crisis of something going on in your life. Now, what constitutes a crisis? I mean, does somebody say it's got to be life or death or does it be a need or whatever? I don't think there's a, a parameters around that. But it's just not, a miracles don't, don't, as the Spirit wills, they just don't show up. When life is normal and good, the miracles just don't pop up, pop up around. Now, we, somebody says, oh, I saw somebody get healed. You know what? They needed a miracle. You've witnessed that and you saw that. But if you need a miracle in your own life, it's, it's, it's from crisis, crisis situation. But who wants to live from crisis to crisis to the next miracle? You know, I need a miracle. The next week, I need another miracle. I need another miracle to pay my rent. I need a miracle to, to you know, to be able to uh, drive, to, to get transportation to get to somewhere. And then two, it's four, four weeks later, you're back there again. Need another miracle, another miracle. And, you know, that's not God's best. God loves us. He is, not, like I said, he's not only our provider, he is our provision, but the, the life and life more abundantly that he's, he's declared for us in his word is abundance and it's blessings. It's blessings, blessings, blessings. If you think about Moses, he did not, I mean, Abraham, he did not declare the miracles upon his life. He declared the blessings upon the life, right? Okay, the last point I want to say about that is miracles are a showstopper to, for, to make unbelievers believe. 
you know, and it's not that we're looking for a show stopper, but at the same time when miracles occur and people either witness it or hear the testimony or both, it, it, it draws their right. attention. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it piques their interest. It's like, wow. You know why? Because that's what the supernatural does. The supernatural appeals to everybody, even believers, even God-haters, the supernatural appeals to them. That's why the God-haters look for the supernatural in all the wrong places and look for counterfeits. They're not going looking for a counterfeit, but they're willing to settle for a counterfeit because they're drawn to the supernatural. But we know what the, the real thing is. And so when we, if, we, if we experience a miracle, you know what? Don't shut up about it. Don't keep it private. Don't keep it secret. You're not bragging on you. You're bragging on God. That's, that's miracle needs to be told. You need to tell people about it because they need to hear the testimonies that are coming forth of my mouth. Yeah, they say that, the, that as we know, the, the miracle is a supernatural intervention. It's a supernatural or a suspension of natural laws. That is something, you know, when you look in the Bible, the things most people remember is the parting of the Red Sea. That's a miracle. You know, all of these things, what do you remember? You remember Daniel and Lion's Den, and, and you remember, uh, these are all miraculous things. The lions did not eat Daniel. It was as if their mouths were closed. Mm -hmm. All of these things in the Bible that you read about like that, they are miracles, and they draw people to the word. Jesus, all the miracles, when he laid hands on the sick, it said, and the multitudes thronged him. They came after him. When you, whenever there were miracles, whenever he prayed for somebody who was sick or dying, there was miracles. When he raised the dead, he raised Lazarus, it drew a crowd, did it not? These are miracles, raising from the dead power and miracles. You have the ability to operate with that. You have the ability to raise the dead. You have the ability to see these supernatural things. So miracles are very, very important. Now let's talk about the difference in that and, and a blessing. For one thing, to receive a blessing that Jesus has purchased for you, you must believe that you are blessed. You need to know you are blessed. We are a blessed people, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Yeah. We are blessed. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, you know what? And blessings, too, they're not based on your performance. That's very important for you to understand. It's not based on your performance. It's based on his. Yes. His blessings, his promises are there for you. His blessings are there for you. It's, it's, uh, it, it's not based on your performance, and they come by the grace of God. That's what blessings. Blessings come by the grace of God. That means he gives you everything that belongs to him, and he takes away your sin nature and gives you his perfect nature. This is the blessing of God. Um. And once you believe, then you can be discipled then on how to walk in the blessings of God. Blessings are come through covenant. Blessings come through covenant. Blessing is God's divine favor that's spoken over you. In Genesis 1:27 and 28, it says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them. So we were blessed from the very beginning. We were blessed from the very beginning, right? It said, then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Blessed. We are a blessed people. From the very onset, we were blessed. You have got to see yourself blessed. Let me, let me read another example here. When, you know, the Bible talks about the blessings of Abraham. And I want to talk about that. In Genesis 12, 1 through 3, this is covenant. God cut a covenant with Abraham, and that was passed on to us. The blessings of Abraham belong to us, right? So it says in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And listen to this sentence. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let me say that again. All of the families of the earth shall be blessed. Are you a family on this earth? Amen. 
Are you blessed? Yeah. Are you a descendant of Abraham? Of course we are yeah. all, right? Yeah. Everybody comes from Abraham and the descendants. So we are all families, blessed. Every, it says all the families on this earth shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. Amen? Amen? We are all blessed. And when we see ourselves, you've got to see yourself blessed regardless of what it looks like in the natural. Regardless of what it looks like in the natural. We're blessed. We're blessed. As Regina was saying earlier, uh, once God has spoken a blessing over you, it cannot be reversed by anyone except for you. When God speaks a blessing over you, it cannot be reversed from anybody, by anybody except yourself. Can you take that off? Here, here's mine. Okay. I'm going to read uh, some out of Numbers. And I want to talk about uh, Balaam. Balaam is an example that, once again, if, you've, if there's a blessing spoken over you, that it cannot, it remains the same and it cannot be reversed by anyone except for you. All right, Numbers 22. Let's look at Numbers 22, verse 1. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was sick with dread because of the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now the company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass on the field. And Balak, keep these, keep these players in mind now, and Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of of the Midianites at that time. Moabites. I mean Moabites. Then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once curse this people to me for they are too mighty for me perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land for I know that he whom you bless is blessed Amen. and he whom you curse is cursed so we know that Balaam had a, a knowledge of blessings and curses and he knew and, and God was with him at that particular time God really God was with him always but God was with him at that time and he was being used by God Verse 7, so the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's fee in their hand, and they came to Balaam and spoke to him with the words of Balak. Then look at Numbers 24, verse 10. This we go fast forward because we had three attempts at cursing that, that, that Balak had to curse um, the Israelites. And all three attempts failed, and it turned, they turned, actually turned into blessings instead of curses. So in verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 10, then Balak's anger was aroused against Balaam, and this is what he says. And he struck his hands together, and Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them these three times. Now therefore, flee to your place, I said, I said, I would greatly honor you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from honor. So Balaam said to Balak, did I not also speak to your messenger whom you sent to me, saying, if Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Amen. Lord to do good or, or bad on my own will. What the Lord says, that I must speak, and now indeed, I am going to my people. Now... So that was the end of that, and of course, uh, Balak was wanting so fiercely to to have these curses speaking over Israel, and he was, you know, wanting to pay him and give him payment and do all this and gold and silver, and every time Balaam started to do that, then the Lord turned it into blessing, and and Balak was really frustrated, and so as he left him, you know. 
Balaam was still doing right by the Lord. However, later on, what happened was that Israel began to curse themselves. Like I said, the only way you go reverse a blessing is to reverse it yourself or get in the middle of, of undoing that blessing. And this is what happens if you look over in Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, but I have a few things against you in Revelation. It's because you have, you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. That's pretty wild. It calls it in Revelation the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak. This is what he ended up doing. He taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel. To eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. So... What uh, Balaam actually ended up doing, and this is where it refers to it here in, in, in uh, Revelation because you don't see that part of the story when you're reading along in Numbers and everything. And, and to, you, know, you wonder, well, how did it all end? You know, We know all the different parts in, in there, but what he ended up doing is he, he gave Balak the information of, of how, to, how to make this happen. And so the, the land got infiltrated with people that would, you know, produce that sin and these women that would seduce these Israelites and, you know, and bring about the harlotry and everything else and then bring about, you know, things that were sacrificed to idols and, and creation of idols and all that. So it was a, a matter of kind of destroying it from within, using the own, their own people. But Bailey gave all that information, you know, I'm sure Balaam was kind of so bummed out, like, this is just not going to work. There's just no way, I guess, because I've, we've done this three times, and every time they keep getting more blessed, not cursed. I mean, it's better off to keep quit doing this because every time they get the, the curse turns into more blessing, more blessing, more blessing. But uh, then, then Balak shares with him, the, finally shares with him the information. I mean, Balaam finally shares with Balak the information on, you know, they can, there is a way that they can lose this blessing or destroy themselves. So there again, the point is, on using that story, using that illustration um, of those scriptures, is that, you know, the blessings are commanded on us. They belong to us. They cannot be reversed unless we reverse them. Unless we get in the middle of them and start just unraveling them, they're, they're going to stay on us and for our entire life. You know, it, it says back in the scripture that I was reading earlier about uh, when in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family, from your father's house to a land which I show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you mm -hmm. and I will curse those who curse you, right? I will curse those who curse you and all of the families of the earth shall be blessed when people try to curse you, a curse causeless will come back on them. There is, that's another scripture. I didn't put that one down, but y'all, I'm telling you, you have to understand when God has blessed you and what are the blessings of the Lord? We don't have time to go through all of the blessings of Abraham and all the blessings that belong to you today. But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, there are the blessings and the cursings. Well, first, the blessings belong to us and you know what? It says, as you keep these commandments. But, when, but Jesus took care of the law. He fulfilled the law yes. for us. So all of the blessings, and you have to go look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. And in the first 14 verses, it talks about the blessings. How you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You, you are blessed and you're coming in and you're going out. It goes on and you will be blessed in your storehouse and in the fruit of your womb. All of these things are the blessings that belong to all of us. These are just some of the blessings. We are blessed in our finances. He became poor that we might be rich. There are many scriptures on being blessed financially. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you sow bountifully, you're going to reap what? Bountifully. bountifully. That's a blessing that has been spoken over you. Blessings are words that God has spoken in covenant for you. And the same thing about healing. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Now, nobody can take that away from you, these things. But if you stop mm. believing... Or if you start cursing yourself by speaking contrary to the word, then you will destroy that 
blessing for that time. Do you do y'all understand what I'm saying? If you start speaking against the word, you cannot speak against the word. You keep speaking. Don't speak what you see in the natural. Faith is calling those things that are not as though they are. Abraham wouldn't even consider his own body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, he had to get there because before that, he tried to create an Ishmael, didn't he? So again, it's not a blessing. He was still a blessed man. It wasn't based on his good performance or bad. He was a blessed man. He didn't do it right the first time, so he created Ishmael, which caused a big problem even for us today. You know this. So, but the thing that we have to understand is when you grab a hold of the word and the understanding, you know, Van and I know uh, some people who they understand the blessings of the Lord financially and they're very wealthy. But on the other hand, when it comes to health, they don't have that understanding yet. And there is sickness that they deal with continually. So they believe for a miracle in one area, but they're walking in blessings in another. Mm-hmm. Well, what we want to show you is how to walk in blessings in all the areas of yeah. your life. Because God's given you the precious promises. He's given you the promises that make this happen. But you've got to get an understanding. By his stripes, you were healed. By, and, and he did give you the, the riches. They belong to you. Everything that was his belongs to you. So you've got to realize the areas of your blessing. Are y'all beginning to understand what we mean by blessings? You know, now when it talks here about, um, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. I want to share a story with you when we were downtown. Oh, we have many actually. You know, God blessed the solid rock of Atlanta and he called us to do what we did and what we're doing now. And his blessings are upon it. You know, when we were downtown, We would go in places that many of you would not even dare to go to. There were places in downtown Atlanta that I never would have imagined I would have ever been there. And we would go there and we would preach the gospel. Nobody ever shot at us. Nobody ever blew our tires. Nobody ever ever did these things. And we would get home and we would watch that right after we left a certain place, there was a shootout after we left. Well, we were there. We were blessed. The people with us were blessed. People were healed. We saw many people healed. We had a lady in our church who had no leg from the, from, she had a stub. And in our service, her leg grew out seven inches. I'm in my hand. It was miraculous. But then she went on from there, realizing she was blessed, and began to thank God for the rest of her leg coming out. And they finally had to build her a prosthesis because her leg was growing, and the prosthesis kept growing, and she was lopsided. So the doctor built her a hollow prosthesis so her leg could continue to grow into it. Y'all, I'm telling you, Go from miracles to blessings. Learn how to stand on the promises of God and receive all the blessings of the Lord that he has for you. Where you are more than victorious, you are more than conquerors in every single area of your life. It is possible. It is. You have to to study. What you do is you study the promises of God. And you study the promises of God and you speak those promises like we talked about last week. You speak them forth until it becomes Raymond knowledge and revelation to you, till it gets from your head to your heart. But out of the abundance of heart, then the mouth will speak and then you speak the blessings of the Lord. And then you operate in the blessings of the Lord. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? When Van and I first started with all this stuff and, and with... Well, when we got married and, and Javan, you know all the different sicknesses that we had. We went from crisis to crisis and from healing to healing to healing and, and miracle to miracle to miracle. And now we're walking in divine health. You can have this. It's a matter of understanding the value of both miracles and blessings. Let me, let me uh, talking about people bringing curses over you. There was a lady named Joanne. We, our ministry had been going about four months. I'm sorry, that two months. We had started in our home 
calling ourselves an inner city ministry work. There are so many miraculous stories here. But I'm going to share one individual story with you today. We had moved downtown. Well, actually, we were at Moreland Woods, which was not far from the old Braves Stadium. And it was a very rough area. And um, we were meeting in this place. There was this one really beautiful little haven in the middle of all this really bad area. And there were all of these... Um, there were all of these adult entertainment places and bars and whatnot, and, and there were hookers out there. It was, just a, it was just a bad area. But there was this one area where this lady from Maine came down, and she saw this, and she wanted to, she wanted to go to one of the roughest areas of Atlanta. Why she chose Atlanta, she was from Maine. And she said, I want to build a place for the families from the streets to have a home. And so she built this beautiful place, and that's where God took us to have our services, and it was totally free, and that's another miraculous story of something we don't have time to tell you today. So we're in there in this place, and this we're in this, looked like a little chapel. It was their um, clubhouse, and there was a, a swimming pool, and, and the, the lady that ran the place was a Christian, and she said, feel free to use the swimming pool for water baptisms, and I'll give you a, an apartment, a free rent for your children's church. It was just awesome. So anyway, there was this lady came. Her name was Joanne, and Joanne was very different. She was a proclaimed witch. She let us know this. So she would come to the services, and she would sit in different places. During the service, she would get up, she would go back, change clothes, come back. She had a little black bag and had all, well, I don't know what was in it. We never knew what was in the bag. And she would go back, she'd change clothes, she'd come back, and she'd move around to different parts of the building, speaking curses. Didn't affect us any. But she kept speaking curses. And finally we said, you know what? This is a distraction to the people here. And yeah, she would change clothes two or three times sometimes oh, during the oh. service. I yeah, mean, no, not I, in the room in front of no. everybody, but I mean, she no, would she no, would leave you. and go off the premises, go or go to her back to her apartment. her apartment, change clothes, and within ten minutes she's back in, sitting in a different spot with different clothes on. So, but the still same black bag, big big black mm -hmm. bag. I yeah. mean, it was a big back, black bag, and she she held onto that thing like it was something special. Well, we tried to minister to her, so we went to her apartment. We went to her apartment, and in that apartment there were all of these. Candles everywhere. I mean candles all over the apartment. I, I couldn't even tell you how many hundreds of candles there were lit. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of lit. And we tried to minister to her. She had no, wanted nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. And I'm like, then why are you coming to our service? Well, she made it very clear. She wanted to do damage to the kingdom of God. To curse. To curse us. Well, we finally had had enough of it. And so we said, Lord Jesus, we thank you that she will never be able to enter those doors ever again. I'm telling you, she came the next service. And she went to those doors that are unlocked. Mm -hmm. And she started pulling on the door. And it wouldn't open. Mm -mm. So she stood off to the side. She'd get frustrated and take about 20 or 30 steps and back stand and pace over, around. And then somebody, somebody else would come, come up, open the door, and come on in. And so she'd come back <laughs> over. <laughs> and that made her madder. And it made her so mad yeah. because she never, ever was able to enter that place again. again. That's right. Because she could not bring a curse on us because we were blessed. But we always had a heart to minister to we her did. if she wanted us to. We tried. But it had to be with her permission if she wanted us to. And let me tell you what happened. And it's very sad. About three or four months later, when we were in our, we had a big gymnasium building. It's, it's second building. Really the place. next building we went to. Um, and there's another story behind all of that that I can't get into today. So... Um, while we were there and, and the, we would bring the people in from the shelters and, and everything, we came home one day and we saw in the news that Joanne, a pedestrian. No. She was a she pedestrian. She was a pedestrian. Huh? She's the pedestrian. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Joanne, the, as a pedestrian, was walking across down at Moreland Woods area and a car hit her and killed her. 
I pray to God that somehow between the time that we saw her and tried to minister to her, that somehow the Lord ministered to her yeah. and she got her life right. I, I don't know. But what I do know is she could never bring a curse on us. That is scriptural, folks. Right. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Then Jesus took care of the curse. So really nobody has to be That's cursed. That's right. And do, we were, do you understand what I'm saying? We were I not cursing her. No, we, we were not, were not. Re returning the curses. We were actually speaking blessings on her, blessings on her, and tried to reach out for her. But we were not going to receive those curses. But that's what I want you to understand. The devil has already been defeated. Yes. Once Jesus died and rose from the dead, yes. the curses were broken. You know, Galatians I hear people say, "Well, you know what? I uh, I have a family curse. My family has this." you know, heart disease. No, you do not. The curses were broken. Please understand that. You are a blessed people. You are a blessed people. Amen. We want you to recognize the blessings. I want you to see the difference in miracles and blessings. Both are vital. Both are very important because I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody calls us and, and they don't know the word of God, and they've got a cancerous situation, we're believing God for a miracle. Amen. Miracles are very, very important. Yes. We don't take anything away from miracles. However, the better way to live is to walk in the fullness and the blessings of God yes. and everything that he has given you through the finished work of the cross. That's right. Amen? Amen. So you can walk in divine health. Yes. We've done it for many years. You can you can walk with not only just provision, but life more abundantly. You are blessed. You are blessed. And we want you to grab a hold of that. You look right now. Get the scriptures out of the word of God on what does it mean to walk in divine health. There are many scriptures that by his stripes you were healed. There are two about by your stripes you were healed. There are many scriptures that he has removed the disease, any disease from you. It's all in there. He has taken it away from you. He has raised the dead. He's given you the power to raise the dead. What you have to do before you get into a crisis situation physically when it comes to your health, get the word in you Amen. like we talked about last week so that you can walk in the blessings of divine health yes. and not having to believe for miracles. That's right. All right, the same thing with finances. Don't wait till you are flat broke in the natural. Don't do that to start looking at scriptures that he has made you, he's given you the ability to prosper, that everything your hand touches can prosper. Everything you put your hands to can prosper. He's given you the power to get wealth so that his covenant may be established on the earth. Don't wait until you're in a desperate situation and then you have to believe for the miraculous to pay your bills this month. Lord, I'm just believing for a miracle. You know, when we first moved in this building, we saw many miracles about provision. But now we're just blessed and the money's there. I just want y'all to grab a hold of this. You know, you walk in the blessings of God, and you to walk in the blessings of God, you must see yourself blessed. You must see yourself victorious. You must see yourself in divine health. You must see yourself prosperous. You have to see it. You have to know it. And this is another thing about merit, uh, blessings. Things and objects are not blessings, but blessings can produce things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Things are not in themselves blessings, but you are blessed and therefore you can receive things. Because what will happen if you lose certain things, then all of a sudden you don't feel worthy of blessings. You don't feel like you're blessed anymore. If you attach your blessing and your mindset of I'm a blessed human being to how many things you have, then, as, then that will fluctuate. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Even when you have nothing in the natural, you are blessed. Lord, I thank you that everything I touch prospers. I thank you that I'm a blessed individual. I thank you that you've given me exceedingly abundantly above anything I could ask or think. 
That's walking in blessings. That's seeing yourself blessed. That goes beyond what's in your bank account. Are y'all understanding this? God wants you to see yourself blessed. He's already blessed you. Every single one of us are blessed. I'm blessed. Are you blessed? You are blessed. Do you understand more now what a blessing is? Monday, um, excuse me, this past Wednesday, which would have been August 1st. In fact, go back Tuesday. Tuesday, 10 years ago this past Tuesday, Mike Olson and a bunch of us men put together, we were allowed in this building for the first time, um, as for, to, took possession of this on August 1, but the day before we could actually work to be ready for that was a Sunday, August 1, to have our first service. But Mike spearheaded and led a, a group. We built that uh, sound booth up there. We built this stage up here, minus this addition that we just put on here a few months ago. But all this and stuff was constructed overnight with a group, group of us to be ready for the Sunday morning service. And which would have been this past uh, Thursday would have been exactly uh, 10 years ago. And during that first, particularly that first year, we had people, we had well-meaning relatives that really cared and loved for us tell us, you are never gonna make it. You will not be able to pay that kind of money and stay in there, you just might as well be looking for plan B. And you know what? Thursday was 10 years, we don't need a plan B. So. Yeah. Ne ne the, rent the rent is due on the first of each month. We never even paid it. We, on the first, we paid it like the 27th or 28th or the 29th the month before. So each, every, every single, single month. month. You know, at yes. the very beginning, y'all, when we first moved in here, our, our expenses went from $5,000 a month to $25,000 a month overnight. Our expenses, our monthly expenses, just overnight. Now, the crowd and the amount of numbers of people didn't grow that much. But, and at the beginning, Van and I, we were putting in quite a bit of the money ourselves. And then after a while, we... we we said, and I told Van, I said, you know, we, we'd had some inheritance money and we were doing it that way. And finally I told Van, I said, you know what? That money's, we're about at the end of our, our offerings and things on that. So we, we were gonna need $50,000 to make it work the next year, $50,000 right up front. In January, and Van said in October to me, and this is the blessing of the, I, I, I'm so proud of you. Anyway, y'all, I'm telling you, we can all walk in this. And he said, I'm telling you, by January, it's going to be here. I don't know how, I don't know who, but I know God. And so we, I, we get a phone call about the 3rd of January or so. And this man who has never been in this building to this day, never been in this building. Doesn't live in this state. Doesn't live in this state. God put it on this man's heart who had never been here. He, was, he had uh, quite a bit of money, and he, he came out, and, and he had purchased a whatever number car it was. And he contacted us, and he said, the Lord spoke to me after I had already purchased. I had written a check and sent it to the uh, dealership for a car that I had purchased. And he said, as I was doing that, he said, I never went to the dealership. I just told them what I wanted, and they were going to bring it to me. And he said, I called them because the Lord specifically spoke to me. That money does not belong to you. It belongs to the Solid Rock of Atlanta. <laughs> Go figure. You know, he's never been here, doesn't live in this state, and God told him he was supposed to give it to the Solid Rock of Atlanta. So he said, it will be there by Wednesday. And... He was sending it, UPS, what was he sending it? Federal Express. Federal Express, Federal Express. So, Van and I didn't know how much, we didn't know what kind of car this was. We didn't know it was we a Yugo know. or what. We had no idea <laughs> what it was. We didn't know. So, anyway, we go and it comes in, and, and we went to open this up. Y'all, it was a check to the Solid Rock of Atlanta for $50,000. That is a miracle. That is the only time we had to believe for a miracle the rest of the time in the last next eight, eight years, nine years, was just blessings. I'm telling you, I want you to see this. Do you know that man is not even alive today? He's with Jesus. But God laid it on someone who's never been here, doesn't live here, doesn't live anywhere near here, to send that to the solid rock of Atlanta. Now, y'all, we are 
a blessed people. And y'all are a part of this. Amen. And you are just as blessed as this yes. church as a body is blessed. Yes. You just have to know it in your heart. Yes. Anyway, we got two more scriptures. Go ahead. Okay. I, this has been good. Are y'all enjoying this? Ooh. Man, I preach myself happy. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, everybody say has, has, has blessed us with every, everybody say every, yes. every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. All right, so Paul here was describing what already belongs to us, already belongs to us as born-again believers. That's what he's describing. That's where that word has comes in. These are not blessings to be sought after, but they're rather they're blessings to be discovered and enjoyed. We are to discover those blessings and enjoy these blessings. As we believe and we act in faith, these spiritual blessings, they become physical realities. They manifest in the physical. If we have put the faith, if we, if we put our faith in Christ Jesus, we're not headed to a victory. We are coming from a victory that's already been accomplished for us. And we have to use, or we have to see. We have to see it on the inside. We have to see it, not just with our five senses. We don't have to see it. We don't discern it with our five senses. We see it on the inside. We have to see ourselves already highly blessed and victorious. Hallelujah. I wrote that down. We have to see ourselves highly blessed and victorious. Do you know all during that time when we were hearing those uh, people tell us that, and people were not trying to be mean and ah ha ha ha, you're going to go down. They weren't saying that. They, these they were, were people concerned. were concerned for us. They you were know? concerned. And, but they were doing it in the natural. And we're not dealing in the natural. We're dealing in the spirit. And so we didn't retaliate. Well, I bind you in Jesus' name. No. I bind those words. No, we didn't. We just said, but watch we did. And see. We just did. Watch and yeah. See. And when we walked away, we'd say we break the power of those words. You Whatever need to those. Do that. We just don't. We don't settle for those words. Those words will be are powerless, and they fall to the ground. Instead, we will meet our pay our payment on t early every month going forward, and, and we are a blessed church. We are a blessed church with blessed people, and we are a blessed church. And however you bring it in, Lord, we are, we are blessed. And so there again, it was, it was, but you have to see it on the inside. You have to see yourself. You have to dare to do it because That's it's right. contrary to what your natural mind thinks. It's contrary to what your flesh is telling you. It's contrary to what your soulish realm is telling you. But we're living out of our born-again spirits, which are perfect. That's right. So we dare to see it on the inside and see it already manifest, not that it's coming. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. No, no, it's not coming. It's already happened. Yes. Who has already blessed us with all every spiritual blessings in heavenly places? It is a done deal. It yes. belongs to us, yes. and we just yes. act in faith and we possess Amen. those things which Jesus has already possessed for us. You know what? The reason it's important for you to break the power of those words is for you, you for yourself. Because what happens you is internalize you, those you things. don't want. Something right. to destroy your ability to believe yes. and have faith yes. to see it come to pass. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. People cannot curse you. No. The devil's already been defeated. You are a blessed people. Yes. But what happens is when you hear these things, then it affects your mm -hmm. ability to walk yes. by faith and yes. not by sight. Right. All right? That's the reason it's It doesn't kill your ability, but it does mess with it. It, it does. really does. And you don't want that even you want you don't want it that to even have a place in your mind. You want to rent space in your mind. I just curse it right now in Jesus' name and those words. You're not cursing the people. You're just That's cursing right. what was said. And those words will fall to the ground meaningless and empty and no power. You know what? Let us leave you with this. Yes. Second Peter one, two through four. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. That's the word of God. Yes. For you know that you know that you know that you have the word in your heart. According as his divine power hath given unto us has all given. things.
that pertain to life, life abundant. Yes. Physical health, prosperity, victory, all of those Protection. things, which hath called us, which uh, wait, which pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called Has us called. to glory and virtue. Yes. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. promises. These are all the promises of the yes. Word of God that belong to you. Yes. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature in every area of your life by the finished work of the cross, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Y'all, this isn't by your performance, but it's by your believing in the Word of God and standing on the Word of God by the performance of what He did for you in the finished work of the cross. Yes. You are healthy. You are prosperous. You have to know it. His Word has already promised it. You take those great and precious promises and apply them to your life. And in, there are areas where some of you are having to believe for miracles. That's okay. But work on understanding how to obtain the blessings that he's given to you and make it personal for you to where you walk in those blessings in every area of your life. Miracles are still very important, but blessings is what he wants you to walk in. Because as it is on earth, shall it, I mean, as it is in heaven, shall it be here for us. As he is, so are we on this earth. We can have everything that Jesus had He's provided it. He's not, he will provide it. He has provided it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't just stand okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 